Welcome, warriors, to another blood and miscellaneous fluid-soaked episode of The Worst Fighting Game, my never-ending quest to find the king of the crap, the emperor of excrement, and the lord of limpness when it comes to what else but the mighty fighting game. With Expect No Mercy, an unashamed Mortal Kombat clone currently being our smelliest overlord, I felt it was appropriate to now throw another clone into the ring to take it on, since Ultimate Battle 22, or 27, failed to do so. Now, as some of you may know, especially if you frequent my gameplay channel Flophouse Plays, I am no stranger to today's contestant, that being the 1996 classic War Gods. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean... Midway presents War Gods. Yeah, that's right, you put respect on that name, it deserves it. So, when I last went a few rounds with this one, I explained my undying and semi-ironic love for it, as it was Midway's attempt at producing a sister series to Mortal Kombat, the uh, Darkstalkers to their Street Fighter, essentially. It uh, didn't really work, but in contrast to certain people who approach war gods from stubborn, close-minded perspectives, I decided to employ some due diligence and uncover a bit of the development mythology behind these all-powerful deities. George Petro, who worked on War Gods as the co-lead, was kind enough to speak to me regarding how it all came to be. In the early 90s, the team George was a part of was developing a multiplayer 3D tank game when they happened to receive a tape with footage of a then unknown title coming out of Japan, something called a uh, virtual fighting? It goes without saying, but their hats literally hit the ceilings, and they immediately decided to scrap their tank game and drag drastically changed course. This refocusing took quite a bit of time, however, as they had to switch over to the same 3D technology that powered Cruise in USA and, you know, needed to become familiar with fighting game design. See, the team that made War Gods was largely composed of either new staff or those who worked on other genres at Midway, so there was uh, quite a bit for them to come to grips with. Meanwhile, the Mortal Kombat team were pretty busy developing MK3 via the reliable digitization process, so they had no time for this polygon shit and thus wouldn't be much help. This divide did instill a bit of tension within the company, as MK was one of Midway's biggest cash cows, so for a bunch of outsiders to take a crack at another fighting game altogether was seen as a bit of a slight. Ed Boon has gone on record several times, even dating back to 1997, that there were zero developmental links between Mortal Kombat and War Gods, as MK4 was made on an entirely new arcade board dubbed Zeus, whereas War Gods used that aforementioned Cruisin' USA tech. In fact, the only assets shared by both series were martial arts actors. Brian Glynn and Carrie Hoskins, who played Shao Kahn and Sonya Blade, also pulled double duty as Warhead and Vala. The War Gods team had to do a lot of problem solving on the fly, as this was their first 3D game, and as George Petro explained, the process used to create the roster of gods wasn't typical. Human characters were costumed and then digitized. Meanwhile, a 3D version was built and mapped with the digitized photos. Each character was actually motion captured, a first for Midway at the time, and the animations were exported as a series of meshes. The game program could interpolate between the meshes so storage requirements were lowered. This was quite a bit of work, having to dress up actors in costumes, photographing them from every angle, and do motion capture, sort of like Mortal Kombat, but then having to apply that data to 3D models, which was a pretty untested and rare method in the mid-90s. Unfortunately, this process wasn't exactly a refined method, as it resulted in a stiff, awkward look that many have pointed out as one of the game's shortcomings. One of those other shortcomings was the game's delay in getting to market, because once it finally did release in late 1996, the arcade scene was already flooded with tons of better-looking competition, which George felt hurt War God's chances to make an impact. 
there are always a lot of factors that play into how a game is received. Of course, the fact that it was a fighting game coming from Midway and not named MK was disappointing to the market. It was actually Tekken 2 that caused most of the problems. It came out before us. That game was so cool and we were just not that cool. If we could rewind the clock as soon as we saw Tekken 2, we should have scrapped the mesh idea and redone everything with articulated skeletons. That's where the fighting world was headed and we were behind the times. Oh well, live and learn. So, War Gods didn't become the hit that Midway was hoping for, and in fact became something of a laughing stock for a number of years. Or let's be real, decades. So it's up to me to see if that reputation does indeed precede it, and if it has a chance to dethrone our champion. I have seen the amateur and it is you! Ah, yes thank you. And there's no better way to do that than taking a good hard look at the- I'll make no apologies for saying this, but War Gods tickles all the dumb 90 centers of the brain that it should. Blood and gore, an announcer screaming at you, cyborgs, monsters, aliens, magic, and one of the most over-the-top versus screens of all time. Roll the clip! Here we go. Wait for it! Yo! Let's go! Perhaps at the time of its release, this might have been seen as pretty par for the course, but nowadays, I think it's the perfect pastiche of the age, and is so very unabashedly midway. This doesn't mask the obvious flaws though. The titular war gods do have a wobbly, odd look to them and are even weirder when they start moving and running, an obvious side effect of the process used to create them. Design-wise, well, they're a pretty mixed bag. While Anubis, Voodoo, and Vala are pretty solid in what you'd expect, the majority of the cast fails to make much of an impression. Your basic gladiator, homeless looking robot guy, and BDSM madame. This also extends over to the bosses. There's Big Green Guy and other Big Green Guy. When I think a bit harder about this premise though, it really does seem like a missed opportunity, you know? A game where a pantheon of deities are throwing hands makes me feel like they should have considered an alternative roster, you know? Uh, yeah, let's just move on. Audio-wise, things are much more consistent. There's a big bombastic sound to everything, from the voice clips to the death screams, music, and of course that charismatic announcer. Pagan wins. Perfect victory. Also, for those that are waiting with bated breath, yes, the most important aspect of any fighting game, the endings are confirmed. Repeat, confirmed to be present in War Gods. While it would have been great to see them attempt something a bit more ambitious like full 3D cutscenes or CGI clips, they did have the hard drive space after all, they default to just using classic MK stills. None of the endings are stuff that'll make you gasp with the revelations contained within, but hell, we've covered a number of fighters that didn't even bother with endings in any form. So off the bat, War Gods at least does the basic presentation stuff correctly. I will say that in general, like George mentioned, visuals like this were definitely lagging behind Tekken 2, Soul Blade, and pretty much everything coming out of AM2. Hell, even Atari's 3D FX powered medieval fighter Mace outclassed War Gods without breaking a sweat, but really the presentation isn't the issue here. That lies more in the... The War Gods team decided their safest bet, since they had so much to figure out on their own, was to just ape what Midway was known for, and that was, well, Mortal Kombat. Despite them adding a number of other gameplay flourishes and additions, which I'll get into, overall, War Gods rigidly stuck with a near identical button format, highs and lows for punches and kicks, which could then result in sweeps, uppercuts, and roundhouses. This feels so incredibly similar to how MK plays, that I can totally see how it might instantly turn some people off, and this isn't because it's a bad format, it's just because it's the exact same thing, just, just slightly worse because it plays in kinda janky semi-3D. There are some differences I have to highlight though, with the first being that despite War Gods being a 6 button game like MK3 and 4, there's no run button, which is because it's done by simply double tapping. 
that six button is instead dedicated to the act of literally defying all laws of reality by stepping into a perplexing new dimension. Pressing this big green glowing some bitch lets you circle around your opponent and avoid pretty much every projectile. To combat that design decision, every character was also given a 3D attack that has an AoE effect which then counters the sidestep, in theory of course. Also not so fun fact, since the arcade cab's 3D button had a big ass light in it, it would get incredibly hot to the touch. Ah, I love that, that's, that's, that's classic Midway. But that's not the entirety of what War Gods does that's new. You can perform a very rude shove to your opponent which is done by pressing block twice. Stomp attacks when they're on the ground and both defensive and offensive options when waking up. None of this comes off as particularly useful though as just uppercutting, sweeping, and performing dial combos are a much quicker way to victory. Still though, I think War God should still get a bit of credit for adding these other mechanics. It's just that they don't quite do enough to distinguish it from on that same subject, there's the finishing moves, which while on the surface play out exactly as you'd expect, they do have some nuance that I think some of you may have forgotten about or didn't know in the first place. Each character does have their one unique fatality where the announcer literally says, fatality. with a bunch of them being mid as hell, but there are a few like voodoos or Aokins which raise the bar in terms of violence. What's unexpectedly sick though is that War Gods actually offers a few other stylish ways to end each bout. If you uppercut or roundhouse when prompted, you're treated to a crazy animation of your defeated foe flying off into the distance. Or the camera cutting to a fun angle to show them falling back down to the arena floor. These are actually dependent on the stage you do them on, like whether or not they have a ceiling for example. This is great if you can't remember a specific fatality command or are just tired of seeing the same one over and over. On top of that, there's one other way to finish him, and that's your character's 10 string. Punch in another command and you'll launch into a mini ultra combo which is pretty satisfying. These are all cool things, but as cool as they are, it still doesn't change the fact that the moment to moment gameplay is still a bit too familiar, a bit too clunky, and a bit too war godsy. Now, we usually talk about the modes by this point in the video, which we will do so now, cause it'll just take a second. The arcade version obviously has an arcade ladder with a second player able to jump in at any time, while the home ports offered the exact same thing. Look, I know Eurocom was super busy with various console versions of Midway stuff at the time, but really? No practice, no tag team, no survival, just nothing else, huh? I, I think if they had been given the opportunity, time, and money to flesh the game out with some additional stuff like... I don't know, god ball mode? I think it could have at least made the home version stand out a bit more. As it is, what's being offered here in terms of game modes would be an insult to any self-respecting god and I, I really can't defend it, so why don't we just move on to the- As I've already hinted at once or twice, War Gods lacks a certain flow and elegance to it. This is due to a combination of the mesh-based animation system, MK-style gameplay, and the bumbling 3D nature of the sidestepping. It just feels like a bunch of separate elements that don't exactly mix together all that well. I gotta give big ups though, the game is fast as fuck boy, and once you start to get used to its awkward feel and know a few good moves, you can certainly have a bit of fun, despite what some slander slinging detractors might say. Like, next time I'm on Triple KO, I'm gonna virtually punch him in the back of his head. There's a lot of questions about like, uh... I played a good dozen or more fighters on this very show, let alone in my lifetime, that feel far far sludgier than War Gods. And while I'm not gonna say controlling this lumbering mound of rocks or this stinky, toxic, 
screaming man feels good, it could certainly feel worse. In fact, that's an accurate description that you could lobby at the game in general. It could be worse. Hell, you might as well just slap that on the box art. With all that said, I'm left in a weird place here where I'm not 100% sure which pedestal these gods should be placed upon, so I just bring in the logo and let's see where it falls. Judgment. All throughout the 90s, and well into the 2000s, war gods accrued a pretty horrendous reputation, but I think its mediocreness was highlighted and propped up when people compared it, a bit unfairly, to Mortal Kombat's massive success. If this had been released by, like, I don't know, Data East or Incredible Technologies, I don't think it would have been nearly as reviled. Going back to it again for the purposes of this video has only reconfirmed that. It plays tighter than many other MK clones I've brought into this ring already. Uh, Kasumi Ninja, Way of the Warrior, the, um, the, the other one, and of course, Expect No Mercy. It does make you think if the team behind it had gotten a second chance to make a turbo version or a sequel, it could have actually been a thing. Uh, or maybe not, I don't, I don't know. Taking all of this into account, I think War Gods manages to avoid the fetid waves of odor emanating off the fairly stinky tier. So Street Fighter the movie arcade version? Give a hearty thumbs up to your new neighbor. And with that, another bloody battle to determine the God King of Garbage has come to a close. And if you out there know of any other contenders you'd like me to throw into the ring, hit me up in the comments below or sound the gong over on my Twitter. Until then, warriors, I'll see you next time on the Worst Fighting Game.